Yo, what's going on guys? In today's video I want to show you my Simulacrum Farmer Toxic Rain build which is going to be the final video about my 3.20 League Start strategy. And in case you don't know, I already made video covering the whole strategy, then I made video about leveling this build and then how to farm endless highs with it to be able to farm enough currency to afford this build. And in today's video, I want to show you the two versions. So first one is going to be uh, the one that you want to swap to after the endless heist. And with this version, you should be able to farm between 18 and 20 waves, uh, which I am showcasing here right now. And the second version is going to be after you get the mage blood. And with that version, you should be able to clear between 25 and 30 waves. Obviously, after uh, you get your basic gear and you can do like wave 18, maybe 20, uh, you can still upgrade this build with some uh, few small upgrades. But generally, at this point, I really like to just save up for the Mage Blood. Uh, sometimes I'm gonna buy some cheap upgrades if I can find them on trade. But generally, I fully focus on just grinding as much currency just to save up for the Mage Blood. Also, I decided to make this uh, video a bit differently because normally when I make the guides for the builds, I talk about first about the gear, then about the skill gems, then tree and so on. But this build is actually working kind of like a puzzle. You can't really uh, progress your gear, just go for one thing, then another, then another. You pretty much just need the full package because everything is just going to fall apart if you're not going to have uh, one thing and trust me I'm talking from experience in the past I would sometimes think oh I can just uh, not get this thing it's still gonna work and then I would struggle and I would clear like 16 waves maybe 17 and I would not don't not know why then I would fix it and then, then it would work so the way I'm gonna do it is first I'm gonna just talk about the damage and basically I'm gonna talk about everything that you want to go for to deal enough damage to be able to do around uh, wave 20 uh, then things like defenses, mana, so how to solve your mana issues, and so on. So first let's start with the damage. So the most important thing is the most expensive thing that you're gonna get from farming endless highs is this bow. So you're gonna farm highs with uh, just quill rain. There are a few upgrades that you can go for, so you can craft some uh, decently cheap uh, bows, but I decided to just skip all of them and go for the most expensive version which is crafted pretty much uh, deterministically which is this bow so right now i actually want to show you how to craft it so uh, let's go to craft of exile and first thing you need is you need a two-handed weapon obviously a bow and you want either a short bow growth bow or thicket bow because they have 1.5 attack speed you want one of these three bases and preferably obviously you would want to uh, have them already six linked and usually you can buy them for around 1.5 divines at the beginning of the league so let's go for a uh, short bow and you want item level at least 82 you can go for a lower uh, so let me actually talk about that now because you're gonna start with just uh, going for alteration uh, spam until you get suffix either attack speed tier one or damage time uh, damage over time multi tier one uh, and attack speed generally is actually going to be better but i think for this version of the build we're gonna have a ton of attack speed so maybe going for attack is actually not that great i when i'm gonna craft this bow i'm generally just gonna uh, stop with whatever i can get when i'm gonna get tier one attack speed i'm just gonna keep it if i get the uh, damage over time multi tier one i'm gonna keep it just go for one or the other it doesn't really matter too much but as you can see for this one you need item level 82 so if you don't want damage over time multi you go for attack speed which should actually give you a little bit more damage not by too much maybe like one percent or something you can actually check it in pov uh, you don't need item level 82 uh, then you would want to have at least item level uh, 78 because we are also gonna go for this mod and this is uh, tier one is for tier one you need item level 78 but also we are gonna use a hunter orb which means this is gonna be random which tier you get so if you don't really want to go for the highest tier most of the time you actually are gonna get tier 4 or tier 3 you actually can go for even uh, lower item level so like 71 or 68 but personally i would prefer 
82 for the easiest crafting. If the price is um, much cheaper for like 68 or 71, obviously go for that, but preferably 82. Okay, so you start with, again, with just alteration spamming until you get the, uh, let's go with tier one attack speed. And at that point, you need to regal it. Obviously, if you have uh, like a second mod, uh, you would want to annul it. So if you lose it, you would have to roll again. So this is actually the most annoying part of the crafting. Everything after that is, is expensive, but it is deterministic. This is the only random part. Uh, so the next part is again, just using Regal Orb. You can use Imprint Beast, but I think Imprint Beasts are gonna be pretty expensive. So I would just use uh, Regal and Annul. If you fail, just go back to Alteration Spamming. Or like I said, you can use imprint basically at this point. Uh, so where is it? Here. You go for imprint, you regal, you annul, and if it fails, you go back and so on. So yeah, you want to end up with the bow like this. So just a rare bow with tier one attack speed, item level 82 preferably, attack speed 1.5, Obviously, with attack speed, it's 1.78. And at this point, uh, everything is, like I said, pretty easy. It's just expensive. So you're going to go for crafted. Uh, can have up to three crafted modifiers, which costs two divines. Cannot roll attack modifiers, which is one divine. And now we just want to use an exalt, which guarantees plus one socketed gems. So just to show you gonna go back every time you always are gonna get plus one which is the reason why it, this bow is actually a bit cheaper than it used to be it used to be like 13 exalts to be able to craft this uh, bow now it's like nine maybe ten divines because now uh, obviously exalt is much cheaper to use uh, than divine so you don't spend as much money uh, and the ne next thing is hunter's orb uh, which should cost between one and four divines I remember two weeks ago I paid uh, one divine for Hunter Orb, but some time ago I one time I had to pay four, so it really depends um, on the economy how expensive it's gonna be. And now you also want to just use Hunter Orb, and this is gonna give you a random tier of chaos damage over time. And you don't really care if you get tier two, uh, tier one. Actually, I got really lucky in here. Tier three, tier four doesn't really matter. Let's say you get tier three. Uh, because even tier 4 already gives you like 60% damage over time. Tier 1 gives you 90. So even tier 4 actually gives a lot of damage over time already. So it doesn't matter too much. And now you're going to just go and remove crafted modifiers. So this is going to remove this and this. And you're going to craft, can have up to 3 crafted modifiers again. Which is another 2 divines. And now you're going to craft the final suffix which is going to be uh where is it chaos damage over time multiplier which is in here if you started with damage over time multi you can still craft this but you would prefer to craft attack speed which is uh, in here, and you would have to pay one exalt for this. This one is actually cheap, I think it's like for chaos, but this one actually costs one exalt, which again is still pretty cheap because it's just an exalt, it's not a divine. And for prefix, you want to craft the uh, crafted plus two level socketed gems. And this one you get from Katarina Unveil. So you can just go to trade and you buy some bow with Katarina Unveils. Uh, veiled Katarina, I mean, and you unveil it yourself, and you should get this uh, craft pretty pretty easy. So you end up with a boss like this, a bow like this. Again, you get plus one from uh, using an exalt, uh, chaos damage uh, over time from hunter exalt. You start with attack speed, multi mod, chaos damage over time multi, and plus two support gems from the Katarina craft mod. And when you're gonna have the uh, this bow, so plus two. It is gonna give only plus two levels to support gems. So for this to work well for Toxic Rain, you actually need to start using uh, Empower. And I would highly suggest using at least level two 
Level 1 is still fine, it is still gonna be upgraded to level 3, so it's still gonna be decent. Uh, so if you can't afford level 2, obviously go for level 1. But uh, I would suggest just going for at least tier 2. Obviously tier, uh, I mean level 2. Level 3, level 4 is obviously much better. Maybe even awaken at level 5, but uh, you should start with at least level 2. And obviously when you're gonna do Simulacrum, you're gonna still... Uh, level it up, so eventually it's gonna be level 3, maybe eventually uh, V4. Okay, so that's the first part of the damage, which is your bow. The second, the most important thing about your damage is the surface heart amulet. So this thing is gonna give you soul eater for 20 seconds every time you use a vow skill, and Simulacrum's waves last around 30 seconds, which means uh, at the beginning of the way, what I like to do is I wait for around 10 seconds and then press the Soul Eater so that when the boss spawns later, I still have Soul Eater active when the boss spawns. If you start, uh, if you use the, if you gain the Soul Eater at the beginning of the wave, usually what is going to happen is the boss is gonna spawn and you're gonna lose your stacks and you're gonna deal much less damage when you fight the boss. So I highly suggest waiting a little bit at the beginning. And what I like to do is I look at my rewards and when they hit three, sometimes like high level of two uh, amount of rewards in simulacrums, and then just use uh, the Val Grace, which is the skill I use to proc the Soul Eater. Uh, because again, to proc Soul Eater, you need to use a Val skill. So this is my skill of choice. And I'm gonna talk about why Val Grace later when I'm gonna talk about the defenses. So again, this is the second big part of the damage. Next thing is. Wither st withered stacks. So usually when you play this build, you use a totem to apply uh, wither stacks, but we are not using totems because we want as many gems uh, as possible uh, to be able to le level up. Uh, so you don't use that many uh, other uh, skills. So for uh, totem set setup, you would probably need uh, four uh, sockets. So you don't want to do it. So to get your wither stacks, you want to use the Eternal Suffering. 50% chance to inflict wither for 2 seconds on hit if there's 5 or fewer wither debuffs of enemy, which basically means every single enemy is always going to have 6 wither debuffs, because it says 5 or fewer, so it's still gonna apply one more. Obviously it is worse than 15, which normally you would get from the totem, but I also want to say that when you're gonna use the totem in Simulacrum, most of the time it's just gonna die instantly when you put it on the ground. So it's pretty annoying to use it, so I just suggest not going for it. And this is a good alternative way to just apply Wither. And speaking of the Cluster Jewels, I start farming Simulacrums with at least two Cluster Jewels set up. If you're gonna be low level, so like level 70 after farming and this highest, I would just remove this whole part of the tree, so second cluster jewel, and when you're gonna be level up, leveling up in the first few simulacrums, so you're gonna do maybe like 15 ways without this cluster jewel setup, you're gonna just use these simulacrums to level up. Uh, you're gonna eventually just take these points and move on to this setup. And here, as you can see, I am showing the 90 level version of the build, uh, so I'm not using six points. And for cluster jewels, you want every single cluster jewel, uh, large one and medium one, to have wicked pole. Wicked pole is number one priority. It gives you the most amount of damage. So for large one, you go for increased chaos damage. For medium one, you go for uh, chaos damage over time. And you can craft both of these with just spamming Abra fossil or just alteration spamming. And there you go. It doesn't really matter. Uh, also, if you just want to. You can buy them on trade. It really depends on the economy. I don't know how expensive they are gonna be. Uh, if you get like a perfect combo, which is Wicked Pole with like Flow of Life or Wicked Pole with Eternal Suffering, and you see it for like 50 chaos, I would just buy it. Uh, usually, uh, something like Eternal Suffering and Wicked Pole cost around one divine, maybe even two divines. So this is pretty. This, these can be pretty expensive. So you want to start with uh, one of the medium cluster jewels with eternal suffering and the second thing can actually be something whatever eventually you would move on to wicked pole but you can uh, get something else and any other medium would have wicked pole and something else and this something else could be either flow of life uh, brush with death 
or student of decay for chaos resist. Uh, and for a large one, you want to go for Wicked Pole and pretty much anything else that gives you Chaos damage. So this Unwaveringly Evil gives you 30%. I think there is one more that I don't remember the name of, which also gives you 30% uh, Chaos damage. And also Unholy Grace as a, uh, I believe, suffix for the uh, attack speed and Chaos damage. Eventually, if you're going to have a lot of currency, you can afford the Unspeakable Gifts, which gives you a small explode mode. But to be honest, I wouldn't really focus on it. Uh, and you can see in this version, I didn't even take it because I didn't want to like showcase the version with it because these can actually be very, very expensive. So I wouldn't focus on this too much early on. I probably would go for it after I already have my Mage Blood. So again, for Caster Jewels, you just go for Wicked Pole on everything, at least one of them with Eternal Suffering, and everything else is just Flow of Life, Brush with Death, uh, and Student of Decay. Most of the time we're going to have Student of Decay because it is the cheapest usually to craft it. Okay, uh, now the next thing you want for damage is the Despair on Heat Ring. Uh, in the 3.20 it's no longer going to have 20% increase effect, but uh, you just want a ring with the spare on hit. It doesn't really matter which base. Unset ring is preferable because you can level up one more gem, but you don't really need it. The other mods are just life resist. Obviously you wouldn't have as good as this one. It is just for, uh, for show. You just want as much life resist and you want one free prefix so you can craft uh, minus mana. But yeah, you want the spare on hit for more damage and everything else in terms of gear you want as much damage over time multi as possible so for second ring you can uh actually i don't have it in here but you can craft second ring with damage over time multiplier uh 15 and you craft it with essence of delirium so let me show you in here you can see essence of delirium ring 12 to 15 percent damage over time multi so you just use one essence on your ring and you hope to have uh, at least some amount of life and you want to have one free prefix for minus seven mana cost craft which you craft with other on craft so just like for the bow you want the katarina craft you buy the bow with uh, katarina veil and you unveil it yourself to get the craft for rings you can buy rings on trade with Elrion veil and um, you're gonna get the minus mana cost craft. Uh, for the gloves, you also want damage over time multi. You can get the implicit, the Eldric mod, also with damage over time multi. On Quiver, uh, you can go straight up for Maloney, or you can just start with a rare Quiver with the damage over time multi and some life, or also attack speed. Uh, and for normal jewels, you also want to go for life, chaos damage over time multi, attack speed with both normal attack speed or normal damage over time multi. But attack speed, I would say, is second priority. Number one priority is getting life and one mod, mod either chaos damage over time multi or normal damage over time multi. If you can, on top of that, get some attack speed, it is still nice. You can see in here, I have this one with just damage over time multi in life, uh, so I would go for at the beginning just for the two mod ones so life plus one damage or return multi modifier that's it and obviously if you can get it try to get some uh, corruption so things like maim immune corrupting blood immune and so on but this is uh, your main source of uh, like build progression you want to just get as much chaos damage over time multi or normal damage over time multi and this is why uh, when you look at the tree I also go for damage over time multi like in here, uh, chaos damage over time multi here, and chaos master is gonna give you a lot of damage time over multi of damage over time multiplier because you're gonna go for chaos resist cap. Because of that, you're gonna get uh, a lot of damage time multi from this. And uh, this cluster is also very important skill effect duration. And for the Anoint, you want to go for Potency of Will for additional skill effect duration. Normally, you would use the Corruption, but because we only get six stacks of Withered, it is actually a bit worse than the Potency of Will. Some people will go for the uh, Jewel. Uh, how what is it called? Uh, the Jewel, uh, the Thread of Hope. 
for uh, just being able to take these points, but it takes uh, uh, four points in here, also one in here, and also uh, you need uh, some additional resist, so I personally don't really like going for it. So just take the unlined. And that's basically it in terms of damage in here. Uh, in terms of gems, you want to, like I said, get at least a level 2 uh, uh, Empower. For the other ones, you just go for Toxic Crain, you start. I would start with normal Toxic Crain, level 21. Eventually, you go for 20% quality, level 21, and eventually you go for Phantasmal. But I will go with at least... Uh, I probably would start with just level 20, and then move on to very fast to level 21. Uh, Mirage Archer, if you can, go for Divergent, but just normal Mirage Archer and avoid manipulation and the Vicious Projectile, eventually Awakened Versions. And for the Efficacy, you also start with Normal one and eventually you move on to Anomalous. These are actually uh, the upgrades, so the gems like Alternative Quality and the Awakened Versions are one of the few upgrades I am actually going to go for before I get my Mage Blood, because usually they are actually pretty cheap. You can buy them for like 50 Chaos, maybe one Divine, so and they give you a lot of damage. So I would go for all of them. Obviously, Awakened and Power is uh, not really uh, an option early on, so just go for level 3, maybe eventually level 4. Another part of your damage is getting Onslaught, and normally you would play as a Raider, but when you're gonna go for uh, this version of a build, you're actually gonna go for Pathfinder. And I'm gonna talk about that in the defense uh, section. But when you're going for Pathfinder, you're gonna lose on start. This is why you want to get a boost like this with uh, movement speed and chance to gain on start on kill. But you don't need to get it as a mod because you can actually just craft it. Uh, so you can see there is a craft. 12% chance to get onslaught and 20% uh, movement speed. So this is the also the veiled mod, but it's not uh, master specific. So you just need to buy a bunch of veiled boots and hope to eventually get it. So again, remember when you spot from Raider to Pathfinder when you go for this version, uh, get the boots with onslaught. Uh, and that's basically it in terms of the damage. One last thing I want to mention is that a lot of people will say that the perfect AoE for playing Toxic Rain is going for 39% because it gives you the perfect overlaps for the uh, Toxic Rain. But you have to remember that we are playing in simulacrums, which means that our single target don't really matter as much. Also, targets are going to just move constantly when you're going to fight Cosis or Omniphobia. Uh, so I wouldn't really bother too much about going for the uh, perfect AoE. Also, you actually want to go for more area of effect. You want to go for more projectiles because we want to clear, uh, to have as much clear as possible. So it's specifically for simulacrum version when you are going for uh, like a normal toxic rain. So when you are farming bosses or something or mapping, obviously you want 39% for uh perfect AO if you're just uh being able to deal as much single target on bosses but again for this one i wouldn't really bother with it the next thing to solve is the attributes so this is actually a very simple one uh, if you're gonna look at my gear i actually don't have any attributes anywhere on gear and it is because with Zerfi's heart uh, your items are gonna have 50 percent increased attribute requirements so just going for attributes on your gear uh, means that you're gonna just need a lot of them everywhere. So there is actually a work around it, and it is going for the elegant hubris. So when I remove it, you're gonna see that I need like almost 200 strength and 130 intelligence, and with it, I don't need any attributes. And it is because when you roll the Caspiro, this is the most important thing, you don't really care about the number, you just care about the Caspiro. Uh, then you're gonna get supreme ostentation in here instead of the elemental equilibrium it is unfortunately gonna remove this mod but fortunately if you're gonna have enough money on it or are you gonna be maybe a bit lucky you are gonna get the number that is gonna give you 
something good in here so like lightning res maybe some light maybe chaos res there's a bunch of other ones that are decent i think there is also attack speed so just i would just uh, say at the beginning don't really worry about it you still need to take this point to be able to take this mastery so whatever you have here doesn't really matter but eventually you will try to get a better one with just something useful uh, and the next big part is defense so how do we solve our defenses so first thing i would say is you want to reach around 4k life 4.5 or 6k life is definitely enough uh, but what i noticed is that is that when i was below 4k life i would die definitely more often like i think 4k is like a, a good break point for simulacrum so maybe like 4.1 maybe 4.2 but definitely 4000 and as you can see on three, we actually don't even go for that much life. We get some life in here, 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 and some from this uh, flask nodes. Uh, but we actually get a lot of life from the jewels because we use one, two, three, four, five, and you can even go here for six jewel. So we can actually get a lot of life from our jewels. This is why it is very important for every single jewel to have uh, between 5 and 7%, preferably 7% of life. And also, obviously, on every single part of your gear, you want to have as much life as possible. And in terms of belt, you actually want to start with just a uh, Stygian vice with a high amount of life and a jewel with a good amount of life. And... Uh, eventually you could go for percentage life if you can get hunter's uh, uh, belt but it's not really needed it's just a nice upgrade if it's cheap so that's the first part just the uh, life the second thing is evasion so how do we get the evasion first of all you use the grace to get the uh, 29 percent more evasion and around 2.5k evasion obviously level 21 would be even better but 20 is good enough but you're not really gonna get level 21 because you're gonna want to go for valgrace uh, second thing is uh, jade flask this is the legacy version obviously you would want to go for like 50 percent 60 percent and by the way pob does not include all of these like legacy items that i am showing in here uh, in standard and it shows like a cheaper versions of items for example in pob there wouldn't be a belt with uh, percentage maximum life um, so you want just life with reduced charges per use and 50 percent evasion or uh, increased effect of flask and like 50 percent evasion so that's what you want on your flask other than that you just get a lot of evasion from carcass jack some uh, mastery 100 percent increased evasion from your body armor also pretty important and some additional uh, evasion in here and i think that's pretty much it what you actually want to hit is you want to hit around 80 percent evasion uh, with uh, everything because when you're gonna use your valgrace it is gonna give you plus 15 percent chance uh, to evade attack hits and eva the way evasion works is you actually like your overall cap for evasion is 95 percent so if you hit 80 uh, this is a big defensive boost and this is why I decided to go for Valgrace as my Val skill to proc the Soul Eater. After the evasion, uh, you also want to have Spell Suppression Cap and this doesn't really matter where you get it. As long as you get 100% Spell Suppression, you're good. You can either get it from gear, you can see that I don't have any Spell Suppression anywhere, uh, but you can also get it on tree. So Mage Band is very nice because it removes uh, the bonus of dexterity, uh, uh, the evasion rating from dexterity, but it doesn't really do anything because Supreme Ascentation already does it. So uh, it basically has no downside, you just want to use it. You get additional spell suppression in here and from this big uh, node, and also 8% in here. Uh, if you want to, you can also go here for 8% and 5% life, but I don't really need it. And one big thing I also want to mention is that when you look at your spell suppression, you always want to look 
uh, without this node because this gives you 10% spell suppression while you are on full life and you're not always going to be on full life and you want to be spell suppression cap even without it so i would remove it and i would make sure you have spell suppression cap and you're going to see here that i actually don't have spell suppression cap but uh, i am a pathfinder and i'm always going to have a quartz flask up so this is the second uh, flask so like again you want evasion uh, jade flask for evasion and you want quartz flask for spell suppression and also as a raider you're gonna have perma phasing and this is how we are gonna get the phasing from uh, being a pathfinder just using a quartz flask as phasing is actually very very important for simulacrums whenever you get stuck in between monsters most of the time you're just dead so phasing is big and it also caps your spell suppression without uh, having to be on full life um next thing is chaos resist like i mentioned earlier chaos resist is very important simulacrum is actually dealing monsters in simulacrum deal a lot of chaos uh, damage but on top of that it is big for your chaos mastery you get a lot of damage from it and to get chaos resist cap you pretty much just have to go for a lot of uh, crafts so 15 percent random fire random resist so either fire lightning or cold and 15 percent chaos rest so you're gonna see on the cheap version i pretty much crafted on every single piece of my gear except for rings because you need mana cost this is why i also try to go for chaos resists uh, in here uh, if you can try to get uh, either a also a normal just chaos resist mod so maybe like 20 30 percent chaos rest and on top of that craft uh, hybrid uh, normal resist plus chaos resist and that's pretty much it it is actually going to be pretty hard to uh, do it but it's definitely worth it also you can go for some cluster jewels if you can get it for example here you're gonna see i have some additional chaos res and also here and so on so this is also another way to get uh, chaos resist next thing you want to have some source of blind and this is actually uh, not as important as it was in the past because blind got nerfed but i can definitely tell you that if you go for high evasion blind synergizes well very very well with high evasion and again we have 95 percent with valgrace being up so blind as us is actually going to increase your defense by a lot and the way to get blind is uh, either through Maloney mechanism, so it just gives you 5% blight on hit, but if you uh, can't get it because it's maybe too expensive or you just want a normal rare quiver early on for just more damage, uh, or maybe you need to cap your chaos res, like Maloney is one of these items that is not super needed to go for it early on. Uh, you kind of want to have, a, have it for blind and additional sockets, but if you, for example, miss some resist, miss some chaos resist, or you miss some damage or life, just use a rare quiver early on. Uh, eventually, with some few upgrades, you can go for Maloney. But if you don't go Maloney, you're gonna need a, bl a blind jewel. I actually don't have it in here. I have Onslaught, which is the uh, old one, but in POB, you're gonna see there is the... Uh, on um, every blind on hit jewel um, next thing is stun immunity so you actually want to have it just from the boots actually i'm going to show it in pob uh, here uh, are the boots with 80 percent chance to avoid being stunned on top of that uh, the obviously it's not always gonna be you're not gonna be 100 percent immune but I, in my opinion this is good enough uh, as long as you're not gonna get uh, like stun locked this is good and in terms of the uh, pantheon you actually also want to go for soul of ranking for the freeze immunity uh, reduce effect of chill is also pretty good but it also is going to give you, you cannot be stunned if you've been stunned uh, in the past two seconds so our first layer of defense is just 80 percent stun uh, avoidance but if you end up being stunned uh, you're not gonna be stunned again within the next two seconds and you have 30 percent increased stun recovery in terms of ailments uh, you really want to be just immune to freeze you want to have a flask for bleed and uh, corrupted blood immunity or the uh, corrupted blood immunity uh, jewel and for any other ailments uh, this is the reason why we are the pathfinder so uh actually not a pathfinder well partially 
because we are Pathfinder, because as a Pathfinder, you're going to be able to spam flasks a lot, especially your mana flask. You're going to see I already used it twice, three, four, five, six, and pretty soon even seventh time. So you can just spam your mana flask a lot. And because of that, flask mastery, remove a random elemental element when you use a mana flask. So basically, when you're going to play in simulacrums, you're going to see any element on you. You're just going to use your mana flask and it's going to be gone. This is why uh, Pathfinder Ascendancy uh, Master Alchemist is not that big of a deal because it removes all ailments, but usually you're going to have like one, maybe two on you anyway, so just using uh, Mana Flask is usually good enough. Obviously this also gives you effect of flasks, but uh, you actually prefer to go for other points because of this uh, mastery. Uh, so this is how you solve your uh, ailments. You see, obviously, obviously, it is not as good as just being straight up immune to ailments. You're still going to have some ailments from time to time, and you're going to have to spam your flask. But this should do at the beginning. Uh, next thing is recovery. So how do we solve our recovery issues? And this is actually the main reason why I go for Pathfinder, is because Pathfinder just gives you so much recovery from your uh, just life loss because you can just spam it but most importantly from master surgeon every single time any flask is being used uh, you recover six percent uh, life and also it actually removes bleeding and corrupted blood uh, when you use a flask but i still prefer to go for this one because it is it's, it it also gives you four percent of uh, corrupted blood and bleed immunity this one doesn't so i would still recommend going for a bleed immunity flask but yes, six percent of life recovered when you use a flask. And maybe in the preview you saw sometimes my life would just uh, jump around a lot, and it is mostly because of this. And this is the main reason you also want to on every single one of your flasks you want to have used when charges reach full. So you see here and all, on all of these three I have used when charges reach full, which basically means when it reaches full, uh, you're gonna restore six percent life. On top of that, you want to have reduced charges per use or increased effect. Increased charges per use is going to give you basically more uses of these flasks and increased effect is obviously going to increase effect of your flasks. So it is also pretty good one. So go, go for one or the other. And obviously when you're going to be fighting in simulacrums, there's going to be a ton of monsters that's constantly dying and your flasks are going to be constantly being recovered. And this is how you just restore so much life uh, per second. Second thing about recovery is life on kill. This is why we go for blood drinker. If there was no 2% life on kill, I actually would not go for like this part of the tree. I probably would go uh, somewhere else. Maybe go over here for life, uh, maybe some additional damage in here, and so on. But this is actually a big deal. Again, there is a ton of monsters in Simulacrum, so we're gonna restore a ton of life uh, from this. So this is your main two main sources of life recovery. Being a Pathfinder, so uh, recover 6% life from every time you use any flask. Also, it works for your mana flask, so you can just spam your mana flask. And second thing is life on kill. Uh, also, in terms of the life flask, you actually are going to notice that very often you're not even going to use your life flask. So uh, most of your flasks are just going to constantly restore your life. Uh, but it is still a pretty good save button, so if you feel like it, you actually could remove it, maybe go for like an Onslaught Flask, instead of having Onslaught on your boots, you could use Onslaught Flask, flask especially after the buffs this league, Onslaught is going to be more powerful on a Flask, uh, so you can go for it, but if you're going to notice that maybe you actually need a little bit more recovery, uh, go back for your uh, Divine Life Flask. Uh, now the next thing is mana so how do we solve our mana issues like well first of all obviously mana flask and this is the second reason why i like to be a pathfinder when i was farming simulacrums with raider very often i would actually find myself not having enough uh, mana flask charges to fight like the bosses and so on so with pathfinder you can already just spam it as long as you want also it's gonna have longer duration so you're gonna recover a lot of mana from your flask but actually, because we use Zerfi's Heart, our attack speed is going to be so insane that just Mana Flask is not good enough. Actually, going for more than 20% quality is pretty useful. But you also are going to need minus 7 mana, minus 7 mana. Unfortunately, 
we no longer have a replica on camera efficiency, so we can't get that. But generally, just minus seven mana on two rings and mana flask with good amount of flask effectiveness from a pathfinder and 10% increased flask effect here uh, should give you enough mana recovery. If you actually want more mana recovery, uh, there are two additional options you can go for. First one is a flask craft. Uh, let me show you. 25% reduced mana cost of skills. And you can actually also get the same mod as an Eldritch Implicit on your helmet. 20% uh, reduced mana cost for attack skills. Attack skills. So uh, that's also another option. But I would say for the early version, you don't really need as much. So you're going to see here. Uh, even with like crazy attack speed, your mana should be good. Uh, and the last thing is kind of optional. This is you, what you want to go for uh, later on. Uh, once you already have like your basic setup, you, you can increase your clear. And you basically do it uh, in two ways. So first way is you get your enchant. So Toxic Rain fires one plus, plus one additional arrow. And the way Toxic Rain works is that when you get additional arrows, there's going to be one additional pod, and it's also going to spread out more. So when you're going to have like four pods early on, they're always going to shoot in like this range. But when you add the next one, it is always going to be um, uh, in like a larger range from uh, the place you aim for. And then when you get even more, it's going to be even further and then further away. So it's going to increase your clear. It is not going to give you more single target because, like I said, they are going to spread more. But it is going to give you better clear. So plus one is pretty nice. And second thing is Dying Sun, which is going to give you plus two projectiles. Also, if you don't have Dying Sun early on, you can go for Onslaught Flask, maybe Steep Knight for more evasion, or even something like Granite for some uh, armor. But eventually, I would highly recommend going for Dying Sun for plus two projectiles. And actually, if you can somehow hit 50% increased flask effect, but for that, you would need to take these points, uh, these points, uh, probably even like a cluster jewel for flask effect. If you can increase your flask effect by 50%, together with all of the Pathfinder nodes, uh, and maybe even flask. Uh, this is going to give you plus three projectiles. And also, obviously, flash effect is going to increase your mana recovery, your evasion, your spell suppression, and so on. So actually, investing into flash effect is not that bad of an idea. Uh, but if you can't reach the 50% breakpoint, I wouldn't really bother with it. Just go for the setup like I have in here. So that's basically it in terms of the uh, Wave 20 version. So to sum things up, uh, when you're going to farm the heist, you're going to spend around 10 divines to get this bow. Then you want to buy Xerfi's Heart, uh, Karkas Jug. Uh, it's not like super needed, but it's pretty much the only option early on. Eventually, you can get the rare one. Uh, you want to have two cluster jewels set up. When you're going to be level 70, you're going to just use one of them. Eventually, you're going to go for two of them. When you get Zerfi's Harp, obviously you need uh, Elegant Hubris with a Caspiro for Supreme Ostentation for Attributes. You want Onslaught Boots or Onslaught Flask. You want to reach preferably 80% Evasion and you want to use Valgrace for 95%. You need Empower, preferably level 2, but level 1 would, should also do. And any other uh, don't have to be Awakened or Alternate Quality early on. Uh, just go for... Uh, preferably level 21 Toxic Rain, but even 20 should be good enough. Go for Chaos Resist Cup, especially for Mastery. And uh, remember about Eternal Suffering for the uh, Wither effect. And obviously Spell Suppression, 4k Life, these are basically uh, all of the things. And on Normal Jewel, Life and Damage over Time Multi. On uh, Abyss Jewel, you want the uh, blind on hit if you don't have the uh, Maloney mechanism. Otherwise, we don't really care, just as much life as possible. Or additional chance to blind on hit. So you don't have 5%, you can go for together like 10%. And curse on hit and chaos damage of time multi on gloves, a ring, and maybe cleaver if you go for a rare one. So that's basically it. Second aura, which I guess I forgot to mention, 
in terms of damage should be malevolence. I actually tested without malevolence and I went for determination and it wasn't really worth it. Just stick to malevolence and grace. Okay, so now let me go over the wave 30 version. So I'm actually gonna log out. Actually, no, I'm gonna just show you in the POB. So this is the wave 30 version. So here, uh, the main uh, difference is obviously going to be Mage Blood. And the reason why I don't really like to upgrade my build before I get the Mage Blood is because of just so many things that Mage Blood provides. When you're gonna get the Mage Blood, you're gonna just have to completely change uh, your other items and the upgrades that you got before. Most importantly, resist. You're gonna use Topaz, Ruby, and Sapphire Flasks. So uh, you saw in the Wave 20 version that pretty much every single item has like a ton of resistance on it. So if you want to go, for example, for a Gloves with like Spell Suppression and Life, you're gonna see here there is no Life, no Resist. Getting Gloves with like Spell Suppression and resist and life and dot multi is going to be pretty hard early on. Same thing for boots. If you want to get like maybe uh, ailment immunity and the chest with ailment immunity, you still are going to need some additional life uh, resist because you're gonna use loose carcass jack, which gives you some resist and some resist from the boots. So it is very hard to go for any other upgrade uh, before you get mage blood because of resist issue. And the main reason why I actually go for Topaz, Ruby, and Sapphire, because to copy resist, you could go for like Abysmal Flask, but the main reason I go for these is because you're actually going to have a ton of armor and evasion already and spell suppression. So because of armor and evasion, you're going to be good against the attacks, uh, which are mostly physical, but you are going to be pretty weak with elemental damage because spell suppression is going to remove 50% of uh, spell damage taken, but uh, it is only 50% and also not every elemental damage is spell. There are some attacks that are elementals. For example, if you get a wave with the most mods, monsters deal additional elemental damage uh, as extra from the physical damage. Uh, spell suppression doesn't do anything against it. So having triple uh, flasks with 95% increase effect is going to give you pretty much 40% uh, less elemental damage taken. For the last flask, you're going to go for Granite, uh, which is going to give you obviously some armor. And at this point, you no longer are going to go for just uh, Evasion Cap, and this is without Vival Grace. You are also going for a lot of armor. So you're going to see that I have 40k armor in here. Uh, for the other mods on the flask, you want mana cost reduction because now we are actually also go for, gonna go for more auras, which means you want your toxic rain to just cost zero mana, and you accomplish that with the uh, reduced mana cost flask and the helmet with reduced mana cost of attack skill. And you also need the rings with minus mana cost. I actually don't remember if maybe if you go for the best possible, which I believe is 30% reduced mana cost. You might actually not need one minus mana cost. I actually didn't test it, but I think you still need to. I think you're gonna have like a two mana cost on your uh, Toxic Rain. Maybe you can get a jewel with reduced mana cost. Then you could remove one craft from the ring. Also, you can go for Catalyst. Purple Catalyst is going to increase reduced mana cost from seven to eight. Uh, but that's besides, uh, besides it. Uh, so again, uh, mana flask, uh, mana cost reduction on a one flask. Second one, attack speed. Third one, uh, reduce effect of curses. You no longer need a mana flask with reduce uh, remove curse on use. So this is just gonna make you curse immune. And here's just additional armor. And for the last one, we go for dying sun for additional projectiles. Uh, so this is the flask setup to get uh, more armor, we are gonna go for a lot of auras. So here we're gonna look at the trees. We go for Enlighten, level 4, Malevolence, Determination, Defiance Banner, and Grace. So this is going to be your aura setup. You can also use Vitality if you have the uh, Water Eye with uh, Vitality on hit, but to be honest it is not really needed. You already have pretty okay recovery. 
but when you're gonna go for the mage blood version you are gonna no longer be a pathfinder which means you're gonna lose a lot of recovery so this is actually a good way to help with that but you still are gonna have a life on kill so you still should have a decent recovery but yeah uh, this is your aura setup and to be able to fit all of these auras first of all you need enlightened level four but also you need on the helmet uh increase mana cost reservation efficiency you can also get it from essence craft uh, just on the helmet and also you can get it on the chest but you need at least just one of them somewhere maybe if you go for more maybe like two or three you're not gonna need like an enlightened level four just level three or something uh, for the chest you want to go for uh, global defenses, Fracture with Grasping Mail, you actually don't even need that, just going for high spell suppression, life, chance to avoid elemental ailment is good enough, but if you can, go for it, and at this point you're gonna be just ailment immune because of the boots, you can craft it with Essence, I believe it's Essence of Loading, it gives you chance to avoid elemental ailments, also you get the Implicit, the Eldritch one for chance to avoid elemental ailments, together with the chest you're gonna be 100% immune to ailments uh, and as an implicit you're gonna get malevolence increase effect and increase effect of all of your auras and as a, a mage blood version you no longer need to be pathfinder because uh, well your flasks are gonna always work so you don't benefit anything from the master surgeon now we're gonna go for the raider and the raider is just gonna give you perma onslaught which means you no longer need flask or the boots for onslaught and also i'm going for frenzy charges for more damage if you want to and you can't really get spell suppression anywhere you can go for course infusion for more spell suppression and it is also gonna give you phasing but you actually can get phasing just from the uh, jewel so you're gonna see here i just have life uh, phasing and it is corrupted for uh, corrupting blood and hinder immunity in terms of the other jewels like i said watcher eye malevolence uh damage of the multi and if you can get it also go for vitality you can also go for determination with like some uh, damage reduction maybe something with grace and there's a lot of decent options for the other ones you want forbidden flesh and flame and to be honest literally anything from the ranger well, not literally everything, almost everything from Ranger is good. Go for a Gathering Winds, uh, Endless Munition, uh, Occupying Force, even from here, Nature's Adrenaline, uh, Nature's Reprisal. Mm. This is actually also decent Master Alchemist for 20% increase effect. Like literally anything, even Quartz Infusion or Avatar of the Veil, maybe you're gonna uh, go for less uh, avoidance from gear. Like, Pretty much anything is good. Gathering is probably going to be the most expensive, but it also is going to give you a lot of damage. Um, next thing is the other jewels. So I actually go here for Inspired Learning, but I don't think I'm going to go for it anymore. With uh, Arc Nemesis being nerfed uh, a lot, I don't think Inspired Learning is going to be worth it anymore, but I think I'm still going to try it. If you are not going for it, you would remove these points and maybe even a Frenzy Charge, but Frenzy Charge is good because uh, we go for Frenzy Charge points. Uh, then you can just go for maybe like more life in here, here, you can go for more damage here, you can go for more life and evasion in here. Uh, so these are the things that you can go for, even a Mastery in, in here. And the last jewel is the Impossible Escape. And this is like super extra thing, like you absolutely don't need it. Uh, but with this, you are gonna get the atrophy for additional damage. Uh, Serpentine Spellslinger for minus 5% chaos rest. Uh, and this is gonna work only if enemy is poisoned. This is why I go for this one point, just to have some additional uh, poison on hit. And chaos penetration is very, very important because uh, on high waves with this build you actually are going to clear 30 waves most of the time but if you get the wave like 27 28 
with bosses and it is going to have chaos resist as a mod on a wave, you are most of the time going to fail it. So I would most of the time just leave it. But with the uh, chaos penetration, so spell, uh, serpent, uh, serpentine spell slinger, and also on the mage blood, you can get minus six percent uh, all uh, resistances for enemies when they are withered. You actually deal much more damage. You, if you could go for influence helm, you also would go for helmet with minus uh, elemental resist. But unfortunately, you need mana reservation and mana cost, so. Uh, I wouldn't go as far as that. Also, with the changes to curses, I am actually considering just self-casting Despair Curse when you get the Chaos Resist wave and just use Despair on bosses for like 30% additional Chaos Penetration. And I'm actually speaking about Chaos Penetration, but in, but in fact, actually Chaos Penetration does not for, work for damage over time. This is why we are not going for Heart of Darkness, which says damage penetrates Chaos resistances. So this does not work for us. But something like this, which says enemies have minus resist, works because that just applies uh, to them and they have minus resist. So you are not penetrating anything, it's just enemies have less resist. This is why also the uh, belt works and also the helmet the, with the minus, I believe it's 9% chaos resist for enemies, would also work. Uh, but the nice thing about this duel is it also gives you the influence for additional uh, effect of auras, and we are using a lot of auras, so this is nice. And it also gives you additional mana reservation. Without this, you actually would probably need double mana reservation efficiency helmet or reservation efficiency on your chest. And you keep the same uh, bow, and for skills, you obviously go for as best skills as possible, so like level 21, Phantasmal, alternate quality, and so on. And also you can start using Valmolten Shell, uh, because we have a ton of armor, so now you're gonna use Val Grace and Valmolten Shell. With this setup, you're gonna go for higher waves, so like I said, you can go up to a 30, but you are actually going to level up a bit less gems, because you're gonna use more Auras, uh, you also need Enlighten, you also are gonna go for Val Mountain Shell, which is another socket, and if you use Vitality, it is another socket. So you, you are losing 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 uh, gems, so a bit less profit per hour, unfortunately. But I personally think it is worth it. And I think I mentioned everything. Also, in terms of the Curse on Hit, you actually can buy the ring that drops from Delve with Fractured Despair on Hit. So this is going to be probably the best way to get the Despair on Hit and Damage Over Time Multi on one item. And on second one, just Damage Over Time Multi. And just let me double check if I missed anything. I think that's pretty much it. So like I said, with this version, you can reach wave 30. I would probably, you can actually go for probably even up to like 20, maybe even more million DPS without uh, Soul Eater stacks. But to be honest, at this point, I would just save up all of my money and just save up for a next build. So if you want to, you can still continue investing into it. This is why, for example, my Grasping Mail is actually not like super great. You are missing some mods in here. There is a lot of other items that are like not perfect because I would just decide to not invest into them more because, uh, yeah, I would just start setting up for the next build. And also in terms of like DPS, if you are wondering how much we are actually dealing with the Soul Eater stacks, most of the time we're going to have around 100 stacks. So normally you deal like 10 million DPS, so 11, but with stacks, suddenly we have 33 million. And the Wave 20 version, uh, with without it, it's like 2.5 million, and with 100 stacks, it's like 9 million. And one thing I also want to mention before I finish the video is there are three main ways you actually upgrade this build and strategy. This first way is through just getting uh, better gear. So obviously you go for maybe better jewel uh, gems, so awakened ones, and so on. You go for damage over time multi on your gloves, so you just get higher damage on your overall gear. So obviously with more damage, you're gonna reach higher waves. Uh, maybe with more defense, you're also gonna reach higher waves. So that's obvious. first obvious way to upgrade the build. The second way to upgrade the build 
is not by gaining power, but by gaining additional sockets. So you saw here in game that I am using, for example, Unset Rings, I'm using Maloney, and this is not needed early on. You don't have to use the uh, Unset Rings, you don't have to use Maloney. Uh, you can go for like a two stone rings or vermilion rings, you can go for rare quiver. Uh, but eventually, if you clear wave 20, which is my like a breakpoint, as long as I can clear wave 20 almost every single time, unless you get like a chaos resist wave on like wave 18 or 19, obviously you are gonna fail it from time to time. But if you can clear like a normal wave 20, uh, just go for additional uh, gem slots so you can start leveling more of them. And the third way to upgrade to this build is actually just by having more currency just lying around. Very often I will just have 20, 50 divines and I will just not spend it on gear because it also helps you. Instead of having to buy like five simulacrums and then do like a one trading section, suddenly you can buy like 20 and do like a one big trading section session and also benefit from bulk prices. The second thing, you're gonna be able to buy better gems to level up. So normally you would start with just like a normal gems, then you move on to like empower, maybe enlighten. And I remember uh, two weeks ago when I did it, when I was leveling empowers, I was getting like one exalt, one exalt I guess now would be divine, uh, profit from leveling an empower to level three. But from leveling enlighten, I would get two exalts profit. So it would be two divines profit now. But uh, Empowers, you would buy them for like 30 Chaos, and Enlighten, you would buy them for like 2 Exalts, so 2 Divines now. So obviously to be able to buy 25 Enlightens, that would be 50 Divines, but then you sell them for 4 Divines. So if you can afford better gems, you can make more money from leveling gems. This is why you also want to have some additional money just laying around. So like I said, 3 ways to upgrade the build. First way is through power, second way through more gem sockets, and third way through just having more currency so you can buy more simulacrums and better gems. And also one more thing, in terms of leveling gems, uh, you can also go for the bow for your weapon swap, and in your weapon swap you're gonna level up 9 uh, gems with Maloney and with Quiver. And you can craft a uh, Quiver like this, uh, you, this is actually from Sentineling, so it's not going to be synthesis, so ignore the implicit. It's just going to be 8% quality from Katarina Unveil, and then you craft the Haku Veiled uh, mod for additional 8%. This way, it's going to have 16% quality, and if you're going to put Enlightens and Empowers in here, uh, they are going to level up faster, because they gain more experience from uh, quality. But when you're gonna do it on a bow, usually bows have uh, green sockets. So to do it, what I usually do is I go to, I just buy a bunch of these bows, I six socket them, and I go to uh, incursion temples and I double craft them for hopefully six white sockets. If you can't get it, maybe you can get like few red and blue and go for like a Vorice for additional whites. But from my experience, it is better to just go for six whites because this way you can also, depending on your budget, you can go for either Empowers and Light Dance, you don't have to worry about, like for example here, I have to go for at least three Empowers and I need at least one Enlighten. So yeah, that's basically it in terms of the video. It was a pretty long one. Uh, obviously, if you have more questions, you can ask me. I am also streaming on Twitch. Uh, I'm gonna try to stream every single day on the League Start, and also I'm doing some additional practice uh, right now before the League starts. So if you have uh, more questions, uh, feel free to ask them on Twitch and obviously in the comments of the video. But that's going going. That's going to be it for this video. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.